if you are an English learner and you're not reading regularly, then you're not doing it correctly. You have to read. Everybody who's learning English needs to read. I would say everybody needs to read, but especially if you want to learn English, you have to read. Now you might be then thinking, well, why do I need to read? I don't, need, I don't want to talk like a book. Well, but books provide a background and a foundation of usage and structure and context and vocabulary that really helps. It doesn't help directly always, but it does help. People who read are better communicators. People who read are generally smarter, right? They know more things. They have the wisdom of those who have written the books or the wisdom of those who have maybe, uh, who are characters in the books or whatever. Reading makes you smarter. Reading makes you a, usually a better communicator and it can make you much better at the language. Now, one simple advantage of reading is that you have a way to discover words and phrases in context. If you just take a word and say, I'm going to learn this word, you are not learning in context. You're just learning the word. Then I would challenge you to use that word in a sentence. Go ahead. So you know what it means, but you don't know how to use it? Mm. That's not cool. But if you learned it in a movie or you learned it in a book, you see it used in a sentence so you understand the context of the word. And that is one of the things that makes reading as a way to learn English so powerful. You get the benefit of context. This is something that someone actually used. All right. But how do we do this? So we're going to talk a little bit about how to learn words in books, how to learn words in books. Now, I would generally recommend that you read nonfiction because sometimes fiction has a lot of flowery language. It's not always that common, but you see a lot of high frequency words in nonfiction. So, I, I'm going to take a look at, at this book. Um, the book is called How to Win Friends and Influence People. This book has been in print for over 80 years. It's an old book, but it is really good. I recommend it to, to anyone. And we're going to take a look at a very short part or excerpt of this book, and I'm going to teach you how to learn words using a book. Pretty simple, right? So buy this book first and uh, let's take a look at it. Here we go. I'm going to read this and then I want you to think of words that you don't know from what I read. All right. That's what I want you to do as I read it. Emerson said, every man I meet is my superior in some way. In that, I learn of him. If that was true of Emerson, isn't it likely to be a thousand times more true of you and me? Let's cease thinking of our accomplishments, our wants. Let's try to figure out the other person's good points. Then forget flattery. Give honest, sincere appreciation. Be hearty in your approbation and lavish in your praise and people will cherish your words and treasure them and repeat them over a lifetime. Repeat them years after you have forgotten them. Now this is, this is a good lesson, I think, from, from the book, but I want to pick out a couple of words here. So let's take the first one that might be unfamiliar to some of you. Let's start with superior. So what do we do first? First, we look at the sentence. Every man I meet is my superior in some way. My superior. Superior. Okay. First, if we don't know this word, can we guess what it might mean from the context alone? Just looking at the context. Is my what? So replace it with what? Every man I meet is my hmm in some way. Well, based on the grammar, if we have my followed by something, it's going to be probably a noun, right? It has to be. It has to be a noun. 
So we're talking about a noun here. Well, what kind of noun? Well, it's, it's a way that a person can be. We know that, right? It's my something in some way. And we're talking about learning things from people. We're talking about ways that maybe in the later context, someone knows things that we don't know or is good in some way. So we can get a general sense, even if we're not quite sure what exactly superior means. Now, maybe you know it, maybe you don't, but we're just going to look at it as an example. And then we'll look at uh, one, other, one other word as well. All right, so what do we do next? The next thing we do is we look it up in the dictionary. Now, I prefer the freedictionary.com. That's a really good dictionary. I would recommend that one. Uh, but of course, there are a lot of there are a lot of other choices. You can you can use uh, dictionary.com. You can use vocabulary.com. There are so many there are so many dictionaries. I like the freedictionary.com because it has examples because it has example sentences and really, really natural or example sentences. So let's take a look. We're going to go over to the freedictionary.com and we're going to look up these words. Okay. We look up the word superior in the free dictionary and we find what? All right. We have adjective higher than another in rank, station or authority of a higher nature. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Of a higher nature, okay? Of great value or excellence. All right, let's look at the nouns. One that surpasses another in rank. Oh, so we have a noun form, okay? Uh, and then we have examples for these. We have, for example, an army defeated by superior numbers, okay? So superior here is used as an adjective, and numbers would be maybe maybe the troops, right? The numbers of enemy troops. Wow. All right. So we can get a sense for it, but here we see it used as a noun. Here we see it used as a noun. One that surpasses another in rank or quality. Okay. So that can help us. Let's see if we can get any others. A person or thing of greater rank or quality. Good. Okay. Lake Superior. Let's see what else we have here. Anything else? One superior to another. Okay, so they're using an adjective to define it. All right. One person or thing is superior to another. They are better than the other. Okay, so we understand pretty clearly now that it means better in some way or higher in some way. All right, so if we go back to our, if we go back to, to what we were reading, does that, does that make sense? Every man I meet is my superior. Every man I meet is my superior. Okay, so if we said every man I meet is superior to me, then we're using it as an adjective. But if we say my superior, we're using it as a noun to say the person is somehow better than me. All right, so if we talk about someone as being our superior, then that means we think that they are better, but we're using that as a noun. All right, so we could probably then take our understanding of this and make a similar sentence. Okay, let's try an example sentence. This is how you learn. You take it, you look at it in context, you try to understand it without the definition, then you go and look up, look up the definition, the adjective form, the noun form, then you try to make your own examples after you get a sense for it. So let's see if we can make our own. Mm, I'm gonna try to make my own sentence here. Um, I'm going to do it as an adjective. You are clearly superior to me in, in tennis. Does that work? Yeah, it's not the best sentence ever, but it makes sense. You are clearly superior to me in tennis. All right, it's a little too formal, but it works. Now let's try to use it as a noun if we can. Can we use it? Can we use it as a noun? Let's try. Stop treating me as a superior. We are on the same level. 
stop treating me as a superior. So a is indicating that this is a noun. So we're using superior as a noun. Stop treating me as a superior. We are on the same level. All right, that works. So I've made a couple of basic sentences, nothing that special, nothing that interesting, but it has helped me to get a better feeling for how to use, uh, for how to use this, okay? Think about it this way. You can either study words endlessly in a dictionary or make lists and not know how to use them, and you learn 50 but you don't know how to use them, or you can spend a little more time and a little more effort learning 10 words that you deeply understand, that you know how to use. So you put more time into each one. Yes, that's a time investment, that's an energy investment, but now you have a better, a deeply better understanding of that word that you're learning in context. And you have the advantage of seeing it in the sentence, right? So that's a great advantage of reading. There are many other benefits to reading. Read, 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 very important. Very important to start reading. And use what you're reading as a way to discover new words to learn, all right? If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, that would be great. And don't forget to check out my full courses, which are on sale in the links in the description. Mm -hmm.